I've come to Amsterdam and I've struck gold, the most valuable thing in the world. G'day everyone, Connor McDonald here. I'm in the Netherlands. Actually, I was meant to be here for a few events, but a lot of them got canceled due to the great coronavirus outbreak. But thankfully, the people at Qualogy have stuck to their guns and they're having me here for a session this evening. But I thought I'd catch up with my good friend, Patrick Burrell. Thanks for joining me, Patrick. Thank you, Connor. I wanted to talk Peel Sequel, and the reason I like talking Peel Sequel is I've been to a lot of your talks, and even when I can't get to your talks, I look at the agenda. A common Peel Sequel theme is obviously something you have an affinity with. What's the appeal of Peel Sequel to you? I think it's, it's the thing I've been doing the, over the last 20 plus years, and I'll probably be doing that for the next 20 plus years. I can do just about everything with Peel Sequel. As long as it's database related, I can probably do it in Peel Sequel. You mentioned next 20 years. People, I'm not <laughs> accusing you of retirement age here, people say, Peel Sequel has been around for so long, it's, it's, it's done its dash, it's, it's reached its point, like what, it's a, a dead language. So do you honestly think Peel Sequel will go on for 20 more years? Or? Well, maybe uh, uh, it will become obsolete in future versions of Oracle, but uh, chances are there will still be plenty of uh, programs running out there which need maintenance for the next 20 plus years. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm good for work's sake. I have actually a more optimistic opinion. I, I think Peel SQL actually will grow. And, and the reason I think that is, what's the big thing that is cloud, 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 everyone's cloud. True. The big issue with cloud I see is that you never know anymore the distance from your app server to the database. They could be same data center, they could be same machine, they could be ones in Asia, ones in America. And latency it's is going to be a big thing. Yeah. And, and you solve latency predominantly with Pill SQL. Right. It's, it's the super solution. It's funny, you, you say it might become obsolete. I reckon it'll actually be become almost like a core. Great. Yeah, you know, a core oh, thing. That is good. Which would be good for you, but like, yeah. uh, I'm, the, I'm the same. I'm a Pill SQL junkie. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too. People call me a, an Oracle dinosaur because of that. But yeah, I, I think Pill SQL is going to grow. Our job is to convince developers that it might be the solution for their issues. Yeah, that's, that's probably the biggest problem because, as you uh, probably also see, we get around on these different conferences, but the average age is just growing. There's there's not much uh, young people getting into the, the SQL and Peel SQL stuff. They all want this sexy and, and cool new stuff like what have you, uh, what's a, the, the current thing, um, uh, Python and whatever. And in a couple of years, it's gonna be something else. And Peel SQL is still going to be around. I have some ideas on how I'll tackle them, but I'm curious to hear yours. If, if, if you had the chance to sit with a group of uh, fledgling developers, they've just graduated from uni or they've been out in the industry for a couple of years, and you're trying to teach them the benefits of Peel SQL or, or convince them about Peel SQL to at least consider it, what, what, how would you tackle it? I'll probably uh, want to show them that uh, whatever they do in whatever language they're using, I can probably do it much faster in, with less code in Peel SQL. Um, it's, in my opinion, it's a fairly easy uh, uh, language. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's faster, but I'll probably want to convince them by showing them, not just telling them, this is better. No. What have you done? What have you built? Can I do that in Peel SQL? And let's compare. That's what I would want to do. It's funny you say that easy language. It's, I'm always amazed that probably the first programming language people generally learn, whether it's at school or at university, or whatever, is typically a procedural language. Right. You know, they, they evolve into OO languages, but the really common ones are Pascal, Ada. You know, I started with basic, you know, when my first yeah. computer was the basic, but they're all procedural languages. And then people say to me, oh, that Peel SQL, it's, you know, it's too out there. I, I won't be able to pick it up. I'm going, hello, it's if, then, else, command, X it's, equals X plus one. That's like <laughs> it's got its roots on ADA, yeah. which has, it, uh, uh, Pascal has its roots on ADA. So they've come and started Yeah, I mean, point. it's, it's, it's so probably you, the easiest language to pick up. Yeah, probably easier than basic. That's, that's <laughs> exactly. 
Although I always use, like, I always like the 256 colors on my basic programs. You don't get that with PL SQL. <laughs> true, true. Back to the, the, the point um, you made. For me, it's funny, I said I was optimistic in terms of PL SQL's future. I'm perhaps a bit more pessimistic in terms of teaching new developers. My experience has been that no matter how much I've tried to convince people of perhaps benefits of PL SQL, yeah. they only really embrace that when they fail. So I've worked on projects where I've said, look, I think we could do this better than PL SQL. And they're like, go away, Oracle Dinosaur, you know, <laughs> leave me alone, which is fine. But then when they encounter in particular performance issues or concurrency issues where they're doing things effectively outside the database, it's only then when I can go, look, I'm not trying to shoot your existing solution down, but how's this for an alternative? One of the things I was really pleasantly surprised at the last few customers I've visited over the past year, a few years is when they do have that problem and you show a PL SQL as, as a benefit, they're not begrudging. They're not like, oh, okay, we'll do it just for this one thing right. and then we'll fix it. I've always found developers, even those who you know, treat their Java or their JavaScript or their Python as religion, when they have that failure and you show them a PL SQL that makes things better for them, often it's those same developers that are like, you know, I've got another idea. We could use this in PL SQL. We could rewrite that in PL SQL. But and, it's by showing them uh, how you can do it, how it can be done, and showing it, showing them uh, that it'll solve their problem, it'll speed up things. But it's by showing, not by saying things. it's a bad thing because I'm from Oracle and I no show them. That's I think that's the, the the main issue. Yeah, I mean I agree. I think, but I think one more. I think we have to let them. I, th I think we have to let people fail. Yeah. I think when when they fail and then they find a solution, I think that's that's the biggest lesson yeah. that people learn. And that's that's not a pure sequel thing. That's anything. And and one day, I'm sure it'll happen to you for the first time, Patrick. <laughs> it'll happen to me for the first time again. That's yeah. <laughs> In terms of PL SQL, I, you showed me earlier on today, you've got a Oracle 7.3 database right. running under a VM. Right. That's motivated by a, a talk coming up on PL SQL. Is, well, actually, it's motivated by, because I started with Oracle 7, 2, 3, 3, 6, 7, 30, something. That's when I, I, I actually wanted to be able to go back to Oracle 7, see what was possible then and how I can easily solve it now in 19 or 20. And are you looking at all PL SQL features across 7 or are you, are you focused on the particular ones that you're seeing how they evolve? Or in this uh, uh, specific talk, it's, it's about collections, but um, I can probably find anything else, uh, yeah, just, just to see what, what changed in the different versions. Okay. And so why'd you pick collections? Because collections are uh, very powerful in Oracle. Um, they're being used everywhere. In another talk I'm, I'm doing is on uh, polymorphic table functions. Everything in the polymorphic table functions uh, code is done using collections. Um, it's really powerful uh, and r really underused. People don't uh, really know how to use collections to the full extent. I don't think I'm able to tell them uh, uh, how to use them to the full extent, but at least some, somewhat more than they uh, do now. I certainly agree. My predecessor, Tom Kite, coined the phrase row by row, slow by slow. Right. And, and collections is, is the meat in that sandwich that solves you know, so many of those problems. The bulk processing, yes. Collections I see uses for everywhere. Yep. But you mentioned polymorphic table functions, which yep. is a, a new feature. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Like, I mean, Oracle, we often produce some great functionality that gets used everywhere and is incredibly popular. Sometimes we produce fun functionality that becomes quite niche and therefore not many people use it. They use it for special use cases. Yeah. Where do you think polymorphic table function sits in that spectrum? I think it's a very uh, niche uh, uh, part of the, of the, uh, the development uh, thing. I think there's about maybe five or six use cases for polymorphic table functions. I've already found four and solved for. <laughs> it's great to, to, to play with them, to build the, the PTFs, but I don't think it's going to be a, a, a very broadly used uh, functionality. There's going to be a couple of people who, like the geeks like I am, who build the functions and then uh, uh, 
supply them to to other people. That's my take on this. I'm I'm still sitting on the fence. When PTFs, polymorphic table functions, were first mentioned to me, people said it's going to be like the model clause. You know, like it's a cool piece of tech, but no one's going to use it. So I can see that, and and it may well end up heading down that path. But with the model clause, when you look, when I look at the model clause, I sort of think, okay, the 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 solutions it, it's going to offer to various problems are, are very narrow, you know, very sort of thinly based. Or you could manipulate it or bastardize it into solving problems that it's not really designed for, but then really just created a maintenance nightmare for yourself. PTFs, I'm not so sure about. I, I often wonder if PTFs, we haven't got, we haven't used them for solutions to problems yet because we haven't correctly wrapped our heads around it. It, th you think about like analytic functions that came out way back in eight. Yeah. When they first came out, everyone's like, "Great, I can do a running total. That's the only use." And now, you know, they get used it's, in so many places as, as people became more sort of attuned to them and how they could be used to solve problems. I'm I, not sure, but I think PTFs might go that way. I think uh, uh, PTFs were the first step because the uh, the functionality is used in the SQL macros nowadays in Oracle 20. Yep which is going to be backported to 19? No, I'm not sure. SQL macros are in 19.6. Yeah, 19.6, so backported to 19. It, it, it was the first step onto a, 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 a long voyage of, of Oracle. On the other hand, I think it's also Oracle saying, look what we can do. This is in the ANSI standard. We're the only database who can do this. And that's it's, certainly true. It's, it's one yeah. of those things where I know there's a guy named Marcus Wynand who regularly mm -hmm. posts on uh, the various flavors of databases and what level of ANSI standard and functionality they have. And, and the reality is uh, people do make conscious and commercial decisions based on those things. Yeah, sure. Whether that's a smart thing or not to do is up for debate, but the reality is yeah. people do it. When we consider things like polymorphic table functions, it's really a, a class of putting more complexity and more smarts and more logic down into PL SQL code. I know you've done some talks on instrumentation in the past. Yeah. For the new developer, whether they're using PL SQL or otherwise, what's, what, what's your recommendations on, on instrumentation? How should they do it? Where should it be? Should they take it out of production, etc.? What, what are your thoughts on instrumentation? The talk I do on instrumentation is uh, mainly about uh, the use of the logger framework. Um, I think instrumentation should be in the code all the time, just sleeping. You should be able to flip a switch and turn it on. And that's probably how Oracle works itself. Yeah. Turn on trace 10,043 something or other, and we'll get all the information we need. So if you um, write code and you put your instrumentation there, then run it through testing. And then uh, when tested OK, you take it out and you deploy the, the code without the instrumentation, you're actually deploying untested code it's new code it's new code it's less code but it's new code if you uh, use the instrumentation in there and by flipping a switch or or raising a, a a log level in this case you can see more or less messages from your uh, from how your program is, is behaving you can even see what it's doing in production you can see the debug information in production no way you can can deploy new code with with all the, the extra uh, instrumentation in there. Mm -hmm. So I think, and that, that's not for, for PL SQL only, it's for, for actually for every... Uh, uh, code is pro, code. Code is code, <laughs> doesn't matter. And you want to be able to see what, what your program is doing and not what your program is doing, what your user is doing to your program. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description uh, about the logger framework. It's very popular in the PL SQL community. And so check the description and you can get a link to using logger. It's funny, one of the things I've, um, I've taken, I use logger in various applications I've done. One of the things I extended it to do was you mentioned having debug code in production and being able to flick a switch. I manipulated logger such that it wrote, I think the last hundred messages into a PL SQL table just on a rolling fashion. Because often it's, someone says something's crashed and then we want to turn debug on which is always unpopular with the users because what you're saying is, I know that crashed, let's do it again. <laughs> let's yeah. crash it again, yeah. yeah. And by which stage they've already hung up the phone or they're, or they're saying things down the phone that we can't repeat on this video. I changed logger such that no matter what level it's running at, it keeps 100 in a PL SQL array 
such that you can just jump on for another session and say, dump what I've got. Sometimes you get lucky, you get the, the, the synoptics in there, but sometimes you don't, but at least you had that chance. It's a bit like, um, I, I call it active session history mm -hmm. for PL SQL. You know, always having that little bit yeah. of stuff that is just floating around in a cache. So I should blog, I'll try to blog that actually. That We yeah. actually extended uh, the, the logger framework uh, so you can turn it on for different parts of your code. There was a one switch to rule them all, and now we have switches to just turn it on for this part of the uh, pro programs uh, using this uh, uh, package name or whatever. So it will not slow, because if you're doing debug uh, information, writing debug information, it'll slow down your system. It'll not slow down the entire system, just a tiny bit where you're interested. So I was over here for OUG Island, got canceled. Yep. I was over here for Apex World, got cancelled. Mm. I was over here, I was going to go to Romania. They didn't cancel, but my fault, I had to cancel because I had to fly home. There's a lot of events being cancelled. What's next event for you that's not cancelled? What's coming up for you? I'm not sure. Um, I'm supposed to go to Canada uh, by the end of April, but everything is getting cancelled uh, at the moment. So. I'm not sure if that's gonna gonna fly, so uh, we're gonna wait until and see what happens. See what happens. Well, thank you for your time. You're hopefully, nothing gets cancelled. Hopefully, you'll make your way out to my neck of the woods, either Australia or somewhere, somewhere at least on that side of the world in the near future. Yeah. Thanks for talking to me. Uh, we'll be back with more chats, but don't forget, Peel SQL. It's not getting obsolete. Patrick and I may be obsolete in as the years go on, but Peel SQL certainly won't be. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Connor.